hyperlapse is a hyperlapse that's recorded in a way that makes it look like you're walking at regular speed while everything else is whizzing by. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to record one yourself. Hey, I'm Matt from Online Business Tech, and if this is your first time on my channel, I do tech reviews and tutorials to help you with your online business. So if that sounds cool to you, consider clicking that subscribe button. Now, I kind of came up with this technique on my own, so there might actually be like an official name for this technique, but I wasn't able to find anything Thing online uh, while I was researching this. So I just decided to call it the walking hyperlapse. So in order to do this, all you need is a camera that's capable of recording a time lapse. In other words, a video or series of photos recorded at a specified interval and then played back at normal speed. So on your camera, you might have a time-lapse mode or interval mode or hyperlapse mode. Or if you're old school, you might be using like an intervalometer or something like that to control the shutter externally. You can even use your smartphone. You just need to find an app that will let you set the frame rate interval manually. And all that means is how often a frame is captured. So for example, you might have a one second interval, two second interval, five second interval, or you know a bunch of other different intervals that you can record a frame. So the longer amount of time you have between each captured frame, the faster the objects in the hyperlapse will move when played back. Now, if you have a simple hyperlapse mode like on my Samsung S9 Plus, um, where it just lets you set a recording multiplier like 4X, 16X, 32X, that's gonna be really tough to calculate because this whole thing really depends on uh, knowing the precise capture frame interval as well as the final playback frame rate. So look for a good time-lapse app that gives you advanced control over both of those parameters. All right, so if you wanna try this out, set your time-lapse interval to one frame per second. And if you have the option to set the final video frame rate, set that to 24 FPS. Now this is important, but you know, like depending on how you stitch together your hyperlapse, you might be setting that frame rate later on during editing, but it's still important. Um, to make sure that the final video is 24 frames per second. Now, on my Sony a6400, I have a really cool feature called S and Q mode, which stands for slow and quick mode, which totally streamlines the process uh, for taking time-lapse or slow-mo videos. So I can just go to S and Q, set the record setting to 24p, and frame rate to one frame per second. And then once you have the time-lapse set up, just find a metronome app on the App Store or just search for metronome on Google uh, to use the built-in metronome and set it to 124 beats per minute. And that's it. So just start recording and then walk to the beat of the metronome. Now, when you play it back, everything will be flying by while you're walking at a normal speed. That's pretty cool, right? Now, this also works really well with the Insta360 ONE R camera, which is how I was able to capture this clip with the invisible selfie stick. So it actually, it's really cool. It has, uh, the camera has two lenses and it actually uh, stitches out the selfie stick so it looks like the camera is just floating there. So it actually captures 360 um, and you can't even see the selfie stick. Now, if you'd like to check out that camera, I've got a link in the description for you. All right, so how exactly does this work and how do you calculate a custom walking hyperlapse if you wanted to record at custom settings? Well, I'm gonna explain all of that, but if you need to figure out some custom settings in a hurry, I also created a free calculator for you to use to set up your own custom walking hyperlapse. All you gotta do is go to walkinghyperlapse.com on your phone or computer and fill out 
the pace you want to capture, so whether it's a person walking, running, jogging, or riding a bike, uh, then you change the pr playback frame rate, which is typically, you know, you're typically going to use 24 frames per second for that cinematic look. And then you can optionally set the playback duration. If you know how long of a clip you want, it'll tell you how long you need to record in order to get that length of a clip. Um, and then you can set the recording interval and the calculator will instantly tell you how many steps per minute to walk to. And then below it, uh, it'll give you some additional information such as total number of steps and approximate distance. So again, this website is totally free to use. All I ask is that if you appreciate it, just give this video a like and that'll help my channel out a ton. All right, so let's figure out how this actually works. So imagine if you were to walk at exactly two steps per second. So every time your left foot touches the ground, one second passes. And let's say you're recording a time lapse at one frame per second. So even though you're walking, each frame is captured at the precise moment your left foot touches the ground. So it looks like you're frozen in space, even though you're moving through the scene. Now that is a cool effect, but that's not what we want in this case. So what if we walked just a little bit faster? So instead of the left foot touching the ground when the next frame is captured, we're already a little bit further along in the step. And when the next frame is captured, we're a little bit further along in the next step. And so if we keep capturing frames in this way, we're essentially capturing each position of a walking person, but instead of capturing a single step over the course of about 28 frames in real time, we're capturing one frame per step over the course of many steps. So when that's played back at 24 frames per second, you appear to be walking at normal speed while everything else is zooming by. All right, so that's the basic concept behind all of this, but what about the math? How do you precisely calculate a walking pace so that when the hyperlapse is played back, it looks like you're walking at a natural speed? And how do you do this for like different paces? So like if you're running or jogging or riding a bike? Well, first you need to figure out the average walking pace, which according to this article is 100 uh, steps per minute. So basically that's 50 complete walking cycles. Um, so like one left step and one right step is one walking cycle. So the first thing we need to know is how much time it takes to complete one walking cycle. So if we divide 60 seconds by 50 cycles, we see that it takes 1.2 seconds per walking cycle. All right, next we need to take the duration of a normal walking cycle, but add the duration of an additional frame so that the next frame captures us walking at what would be the next leg position in a normal uh, 24 frame per second recording. So one frame of a 24 per second video would be one divided by 24, which equals 0 0.042 seconds per frame. So all we need to do is just add that to the duration of a normal walking cycle and we get 1.242 seconds. So 1.242 seconds is the amount of time we need to compress into one second because that's our frame interval. So one frame per second divided by 1.242 seconds is approximately 0 0.805 uh, scale factor. So with the scale factor figured out, we can simply multiply it with the duration of one walking cycle. So 1.2 seconds per walking cycle times the 0 0.805 scale factor equals 0.966 seconds per walk cycle. So that's what we need to walk to. And then if we divide that out over uh, 60 seconds, we get 62.1 walk cycles per minute. So double that number to find the cadence for both the left and right foot. So that's 124 steps per minute. All right, but what about slower frame intervals? So it gets tricky when you use a longer capture interval because you'd have to walk so unnaturally slow in order to capture the correct leg position. It just doesn't work. So instead, you should factor in an adjustment factor so that the frame captures at a further interval of steps instead of every other step. 
So for example, if you're capturing a frame at a five second interval, um, you can walk at 96 beats per minute and a frame will be captured every eight steps. And again, my calculator figures all of this out for you automatically. You just go to walkinghyperlapse.com uh, to check it out. And finally, I wanna share some tips with you to help you get the most out of this technique. Tip number one, use a slower shutter speed. You know, this is something, this is a tip for just in general for any time lapse or hyperlapse. Um, but I found something like 1 13th of a second uh, works really good. So what this will do is it'll smooth out uh, some of the camera shake uh, while also emphasizing the movement that's in the scene. Um, and it'll kind of blur together any small differences in your walking speed. So it kind of just helps smooth everything out. Now, of course, when you slow down the shutter speed, um, you need to offset that in order to prevent overexposing the frame. So you can either close down your aperture, um, definitely use the lowest ISO setting you can. Uh, but if you're shooting in direct sunlight, you probably also need to use an ND filter like this one to block some additional light. Um, this one I have here is from Gobi, and I'll have links for that in the description as well if you're interested in checking that out. Tip two uh, is probably obvious, but if you're recording someone else, you wanna try uh, your best to keep the person in the same spot in each frame in order to prevent too much jitter. Um, so you can always add some image stabilization in post-production, but um, a gimbal will definitely help too. Another thing that will help with jitter is to try to get as close as possible to the person. Um, so that means using a wide lens, which will allow you to get nice and close. Now, this is gonna basically de-emphasize some of the inevitable inconsistencies in camera position between each frame captured. Another tip, uh, tip number four, I think, is uh, try experimenting with using a monopod held at like a 45 degree angle close to the ground pointed at you to get a side view of yourself walking. And you can do the same thing for like a front view looking towards you as you're walking forward. And so if your camera's upside down, all you have to do is flip the image in post-production. And tip number five, uh, just a tip uh, as far as composition of your scene when you're recording a walking hyperlapse. So things far away in the distance are going to be moving much slower while things closer to the camera will move fast and appear blurry, which is really cool. It can add some nice contrast um, to the scene and provide more context. All right, I hope you have fun with the walking hyperlapse technique. And if you do upload any videos, make sure to tag them with hashtag walking hyperlapse so I can check them out. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.